What's up guys, BD Wiz, Wilson Audio Labs here to test some five channel amps. People ask me quite a bit, Big D, test some five channel amps, see if these things really do rated. I think a lot of people like these type of amps, so let's dive right in. First up, we're gonna look at the Kenwood Exelon X801-5. You can see the small size here, about the size of my hand. I purchased a refurbished model from Car Toys for $179, which is a great price. Both amplifiers I'm testing today have a retail price of $349, so they're equivalent in that way. Here we can see some of the Kenwood features. The reliability and thermal management system instantaneously controls amplitude. We have audio grade capacitors here, and also this dual sigma drive, and that's essentially a, an advanced negative feedback circuit and improves damping factor. The Kenwood sub-channel is rated 300 watts RMS at 4 ohms, 500 watts RMS at 2 ohms, and the front channels are rated 150 by 2 bridged at 4 ohms. Here we can see the crossover adjustments for channels A and B, low pass, high pass, or full pass, also the sub-low pass filter and a bass boost adjustment. Moving further down, we can see channels A and B, and also the sub-level. They all have independent input adjustments, and you can select between using all five channels or just four for the sub. Here's the RCA connectors. You can see we have A channel plus B channel plus sub. Again, for our test, we're just going to use A and B and some of the sub. The amp has some of the smallest end caps I've ever seen on any amplifier. They help cover the terminals so you don't short anything out. On the other side of the amp, you can see the 330 amp fuses the power and ground and also the remote connection and then all the speaker connections are on these terminal strips here with screw down terminals it makes it easy to connect in my opinion a little bit easier than the inserts next up we'll look at the other amp we're going to test the pioneer gm d 9605 you can see the retail price is the same 350 dollars they have 2000 watts max power listed for some reason I was able to pick this one up on Amazon for 193 bucks and how Amazon's price fluctuate. But uh, yeah, some of the features it, it talks about here, not a whole lot of very interesting things. It does have a low pass filter. You can have a remote base connection, which is something the Kenwood does not have. It also has speaker level inputs. As far as the ratings go, it's actually rated a little bit more than the Kenwood. It's rated 200 by two plus 600 by one when you have the front two channels at four ohms bridge and the sub at two ohms. Let's check out the connections here on the Pioneer. It looks actually a little bit more confusing to me than the Kenwood, but it's really not that bad. You can see we have frequency adjustments for channel A and also the gain, select two channel or four channel. We have the subwoofer base remote, the frequency adjustment, and also 12 or 24 dB for the crossover. We have six RCA inputs, same as the Kenwood. You can use either two or four or six, whichever is easier for you and there's speaker level inputs there via an adapter. On the other side, it's pretty much the same. At the top, we have the rear channels, the gain and the frequency, and at the bottom, we have the adjustment for the bass channel. On the opposite side of the amplifier, we have the connections for power inputs. You can see here four gauge for power and ground, also three 30 amp fuses matching what the Kenwood has. And here are the speaker terminals, the eight gauge for the subwoofer, and then all the rest of them are around 12 gauge or so. It's a pretty tight fit for 12 gauge, and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later. I'm used to having two different size Allen keys when I'm working with amplifiers, but the ones for these speaker terminals, it is so tiny. Make sure you have an extra one of these and keep it in your car just in case your speakers come detached because you're not gonna find one of those In order to make the measurements more simple for my test here, what I decided to do was use a three channel mode on both amplifiers. The front and rear channels were bridged, plus a subwoofer, and they were all hooked up to resistors, either using the amp dynos built-in resistors or this external resistor bank that I built a while back. That way we can ensure that all channels are loaded during these tests and we're getting accurate numbers, just like you would in your car. You're gonna have all the channels loaded, not just a few of them. All right, first test we're gonna do is eight ohms on the front channels, Pioneer's on the top, Kenwood's on the bottom. Pioneer's rated 150 by two, Kenwood's rated 100 by two. As you can see, the Kenwood killed it, did more than twice its rated power. 
Pioneer didn't do too bad either. It did above its rated, but not as much as the Kenwood did. Next up, we'll try the front and rear channels bridged at four ohms, one kilohertz. Again, Pioneer on top, Kenwood on bottom. Pioneer is rated to deliver 200 by two and delivered 300, so nice. But look at Kenwood, rated 150 by two. It did even more, 340. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy, that's what we like to see. All right, in this test, we're gonna do the 40 hertz track. Again, measuring the front and rear channels bridged at four ohms. And you can see here, of course, we still get more than rated on the Pioneer. 250, it's rated 200 by two. The Kenwood still killed it, 285. Yeah, boy. Only rated 150 by two. All right, now let's check out those sub channels. Pioneer's rated 350 by one at four ohms. Kenwood's rated 300 by one at four ohms. Yeah, they got almost identically the same. Pioneer came a little bit under at 304. Kenwood came a little bit over at 306. So Kenwood for the win here. Now let's load them down to two ohms. And again, we're trying 40 Hertz. Pioneer on the top is rated at 600 Watts. Kenwood's rated at 500 Watts. Again, uh, Pioneer doesn't quite get its rated power, but the Kenwood gets right at it and a little bit under the voltage. So good job there. Now let's try dynamically and see which one of these amps has more dynamic juice. We would expect the Pioneer since it's a little bigger and oh yes it does. Check out that dynamic power, 707 for the Pioneer, 549 for the Kenwood. Here are the results for both amps. The biggest thing I would notice here is the dynamic power on the front channels is not that big but they're not really designed to be loaded down to 40 hertz, so that's not a big deal. Um, sub channels, the Pioneer came up a little bit short, but we didn't use 100 hertz, which is what they use, and also we didn't have quite 14.4 volts, and I think it probably would have met rated if we would have done that. Now let's take the bottom panels off and check out the guts. All right, here we can see the internals of the Kenwood at the bottom here, which is noticeably smaller than the Pioneer. It's quite amazing the Kenwood does as much power as it does to be as small and compact as it is. You can see here, notice the larger transformer on the Pioneer, but the Kenwood has some better components inside. It actually has audio grade Elena caps there and also has Rubicon caps. Smaller transformer, um, again, it's more compact and quite amazing that it does its rated power even more than rated being so small. There's a Rubicon caps. Next up, we'll look at the Pioneer. Pioneer has a large transformer, several more caps, and actually more heat sink to keep everything nice and cool. These Sam Young caps, though, not too sure about those. I think those are cheapos. And you can see some of the other components in here and this connection between the motherboard and the daughter board. So next up, let's talk about the positives and negatives, the good stuff. Pioneer has a more powerful sub-channel, remote subwoofer control, and has high-level inputs. Kenwood has more powerful front and rear channels, smaller footprint, and quality capacitors. On the negative side, the sub-channel for the Pioneer could do a little better. The small speaker terminals kind of suck, and the tiny Allen wrench, yuck. No remote sub-based control for the Kenwood, more dynamic sub-power, and the street price being a little better would be nice. This is Big D Wiz. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I'm out of here. All right, I've got this Kenwood x X805, or sorry, X801-5. I've got it hooked up here. All the channels are loaded. I've got the front and rear channels bridged going into this uh, resistor bank I built a while back, going through the AMM1, and then I've got the sub channel going into the dyno, and I'm gonna run a 40 hertz tone, and I'm gonna check the output of the sub channel and also one of the other channels. So let's see how this does. It's rated 500 watts on the sub channel and 150 on the front channel. All right, 511 at 14.2. And the front channel says 221. <laughs> and we pulled uh, 88.3 amps of current, so wow. 
This is a powerful little amplifier right here, my friends. Nice job, Kenwood. All right, so this should be an interesting test. Since this is a five channel amp, we should assume that you're gonna load down all channels when you use it. So we're gonna load all channels down here for our test. And we've actually got the AMM1 on the sub channel. So let me explain. The front and rear channels are bridged using the correct connections here with the 12 gauge Stinger OFC speaker wire and going into the dyno here, two different sides, two different inputs. So we've got front channels here, rear channels here, and then we have eight gauge OFC power wire as speaker wire here for the sub channel. And the sub is going over into this old resistor bank that I made a while back and I have it wired down to two ohms. So the 40 hertz track here on the dyno is actually going to give us the ability to load down all channels at the same time because we have crossovers on the front and rear channel set to full range so that way it can accept the 40 hertz track. So we'll see what we get here on the dyno and then we'll also check the AMM1. All right. 229 watts, 218. So again, if we divide that by two, um, that will give us the two ohm per channel uh, measurement, which is about 115 watts per channel. So you can see we pulled 111 amps of current. Subchannel did 560, 560 watts. So it did its rated power plus more. You big and Our voltage was 14.2, so good job, Pioneer.